på mässa. Och då tänkte jag att det är dumt att ha den Hello, sir. You are part of this? What? You are part of this? You are representing the stand? Yeah. There, there's the boss. Okay. Okay. Yes, Welcome to Canon stand here at uh, the Foot to Fair. Here we have a lot of really, really nice products. We have, of course, this one, the US R3. That is the most professional camera we have in the R series. And then we have the R5 and the R5C. That is a cinema version of the R5, as you can see here. And then, of course, we have all the other ones. R6, R2, and also the smaller APS-C cameras. And as you can see here, we have a lot of lenses also. The largest one, the 1200 mil lens. It's an amazing lens for the ones that really need, it, need to get really close to the object. And then you can see there are a lot of lenses we have released in the R series. For, for, for just four years, we have more than 30 lenses in the system now. So we are expanding the EOS R system with really, really high speed. So a lot of camera bodies, a lot of lenses in the R series as it is for now. Thank you for watching. <laughs> Det 
nu så kommer det liksom ett batteri med nya grejer. Inget tyvärr som jag kan säga att du borde vänta på för just ditt, för ditt enda mål. Men det kommer ett batteri med nya grejer och vi kommer lansera nästan alltså konstant månad för månad resten av året. Så att det är absolut i olika storlekar och kulörer höll jag på att säga. Vi har precis annonserat att vi ska släppa Z-fattning. Så mycket som kanske kommer bli det har ingen fel stöd alls. Det blir åtta steg stabiliserat. Ja, det är så att det är helt olika hur fast... Det stämmer alls där. Där har man ju... Samma sensor, samma processor. Jag måste fråga mig på det. Det är inte hela världen. 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 Det är inte hela Yeah. 
Highly water resistant and uh, yeah, strong, strong, and, strong, strong and light. And a lot of features. Laptop pocket, lots of things. Water, water resistant zip. Bländar upp och liksom Nej, försökt att... Och det är det är det är det. Ja, det är stort. Jag har 
skulle ha ner till Det är ju så att det är någon kom. Hej då. Hej då. Hur är du? Bra. Hur kan jag hjälpa dig? Kanske kan du prata om vad alla produkterna är och det här stuff ska vara bra. Ja, ja. Så var är du från? Jag är från India och jag har en liten YouTube-kanal. Ja, okej. Så kanske du kan prata om det. Hello. Yeah. So what you can see here is Profoto's smallest assortment. This is the click segment. Okay. Uh, and with click, we mean you can easily attach different accessories to the flashes in a click. It's a magnet, so you hear it like this. You right. heard this click. Yes. So this system is very easy and fast to use. We have a big range of different modifiers. Everything here from different color filters to make different creative moods. You can control the light with a honeycomb grid if you like to yeah, have a more directed light, okay. snoots. We have also an adapter. If you are a pro for the user and user, the bigger system, for example, the B10. Then you can connect this smaller system through an adapter. So, one of the key strengths with the Profoto system is that it's a big ecosystem. You can grow in and out and between the different it's sizes and models. Include and more, uh, include more similar devices and uh, make use, make a better use of it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is the latest click flash. This is called the A2. Okay. A super compact, uh, very powerful flash. Um, it's the same system again, so you can just use the magnetic mount and just click it on like that. It's great. Instead of just pushing it around and stuff, just a one click. Yeah. It's great. And it, we have different other modifiers as well, like yeah, soft boxes and so on. So yeah, you have all creative possibilities. Thank you. Welcome.
Hello, welcome. We're here today to show the new soft boxes from SNDV, and they have an extreme fast setup system. Just pull them back. You can pop in all different kinds of flashes. A round head flash. Just put them in. If you want to use another flash, you can take out the adapter. Put in a square head adapter. Also fit in wow. these guys. And even the bigger studio flashes. We have smaller adapters for. Go to mount, so those are fixed them up. Just pull it down like this. Yep. That's it. That's yep. a quick one. And do you want to talk about the other flashes as well? Yeah. So which uh, out of all these flashes? What do you, out of all these flashes, which one do you recommend for a beginner and which one do you recommend for a pro? When I look at the, the Godox collection for a beginner, mm -hmm. you can start with something like this. This is a regular flash. You can put it on camera. Okay. It's available for all brands, Canon, Nikon, Sony, Fuji, Olympus, Panasonic uh, and Pentax. Okay. Uh, but this one has a lithium battery okay. that makes it faster and you can do a whole lot of flashes on one, one charge. When you buy the trigger with it, okay. this one, you can also use it off camera. Off camera? Yeah, you can also use it off camera. Receivers are already built in, mm -hmm. so you need, don't need anything extra, only the, the trigger. Okay. So that's good for a beginner. When you are a little bit more advanced mm -hmm. and you want to do a lot more off camera flash, And you can pick something like this. This is a 300 watt second studio flash. So it's much more powerful than the off-camera flash. It has a regular flash tube. You can put on uh, a bigger soft boxes, uh, light shapers. But it still works with the same trigger. So when you start with something like this, and you expand something like that, you can use them both at the okay. same time with the same trigger. They're all battery powered. So also this one also has the lithium battery. That's a bigger one. A bigger one, yeah. So you can do a whole lot of flashes and have the fast recycle time and use it at the same time. Okay. And that's with the Godox system, which one you pick doesn't matter. They all can be used with the same trigger system. That's great. Yeah? That's great. And thank you for the overview. Good day. Good. Hi. Let me show you what we have here. Uh, Laova is a great new brand of uh, kind of um, uh, things that you use for the camera. Um, so what we have is for if you uh, are into macro shooting, filming or uh, photography, then Laova is very good for this. They are innovative and also come up with very funny things. And I will show you this. Here you have it. Oh, yes, this is a very famous lens. Of it is, yes. So if you have a little small thing out there, when you, if you come with a big camera, you destroy the light for it. So you come with a whole shadow there and you destroy the light. But if you instead 
if you come with this little thing a bit closer, then you don't destroy the, the light with all. Correct. You can also you can uh, add light to it by these LED, and small LED right. lighting things. So this has become very very uh, popular. Yes, it is. Yes, it yeah. is. There is quite a lot of people using this for macro, macro photography. It is, yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. So this is really a big thing. But uh, then we have the whole uh, whole wide of, uh, well, lots of things as well here. What is this lens? And this is, uh, actually my boss should have been here. This is for... It's a 7.5 millimeter. Uh -huh. uh, That's the widest thing that we can see. That's like yes, it is actually. Like the, very, very wide. The ultra wide. Oh yeah. Okay. There you have this. Okay. So it's very. Uh, it's all for all varying needs and the purposes that you have. It. Yeah. Another thing that we have here is that if you want to, uh, if you want to, uh, let me see. There you go. A slide uh -huh. that you use. Uh, let me see. Uh, start it up. Uh -huh. Sure, sure. I'll wait. And if you put a camera here or so, and if you want to move it very smoothly, then you can use this one for moving it in the speed you like and how, uh, how long you like as well. You can have waypoints in, in between here, you can move them between them. So this is also what we have here. This is this will be this will be very useful for transition. Oh, absolutely! Probably. It is. We have these in three sizes, and this is the smallest. Okay. It's Great. very convenient. You can have it in the rucksack and just put it up there. So this is in general, and another thing is this eight millimeter film scanner. Do you want to talk about it? Well, I can show you. Um, the thing is that there are so many that has a lot of old 8mm uh, movies and uh, they are becoming at least 50 years old now right these are made of plastic material plastic goes dry and uh, when you want to put it on your projector if you still have it then it would probably go broke mm. because it's too old so what you can do here is to you put the uh, the uh, film here Put it through all of this, mm -hmm. go and up there, and this scans picture by picture, okay. and put it puts it in an MPEG-4 file, okay. which is very convenient. You can have it in your computer. I can send it to someone's mobile. Or so this whatever. will be good for anyone who want to convert the 8mm into a MP4 kind of a converter. Oh yes, oh, that's great. Very convenient and also very popular as well. Great. So this is in general what we have here. Thank you so much. I appreciate your uh, you tour. Hello. Hello. Hi. Would you like to give a small tour about the, uh, the all the equipments here? Yeah. Sure. So uh, my name is Sebastian, I'm the uh, sales manager for Sigma Nordic. Uh, nice to meet the, you. Nice to meet you too. So uh, what we have here today is kind of an assortment, uh, like a selection of our assortment because we have a very wide assortment. We have almost 150 different lenses with different mounts. This is about 50 of them, so a third. Um, we base our concept around three different um, lines. We have the sports lineup that is over here. Then we have the art lineup, which is over here, more or less. And then we have a contemporary lineup that is over here. So three different lines. If we start again over at the sports series, this is our high-speed, high-performance sports lenses, telezooms, 
uh, tele primes. Um, they are all weather sealed to be performing good even in the bad weathers or in bad conditions. Uh, it ranges from a prime 500 down to 60 to 600. We also have a 150 to 600 and we also have a 70 to 200, 2.8. So we have a lot of different lenses with different mounts. They span from L mount, our own mount, uh, to E mount, but also Nikon F and Canon EF. So a lot of different uh, mounts and options. Um, if we walk over to the art, the art lineup is our high performance prime and normal zoom lenses. They are usually prime 1.4s or 1.2. Uh, and on the zooms they're usually 1.8 or 2.8. So they are very bright, high performing lenses. They are all weather sealed, just like the sports lineup. So weather sealed, high performing lenses, no compromises to your uh, to your lens. Bring it out in any weather condition or in in uh, any kind of situation, and they will perform at their absolute maximum. Um, then we have the contemporary line, and the contemporary line we have actually divided into two different here. You can see here is kind of an all metallic one. We call them the I series. Uh, the I series is a full frame lineup. A little bit smaller aperture. This one particularly is a 20 millimeter 2.0. That's that's an amazing wide, uh, ultra wide. Super wide 2.0. We also have the art uh, version here, which is 1.4. So you can see it's wow. kind of a big difference in size. So for the person who wants something light, mm -hmm. maybe for going out in the nature, you want to carry lighter. And this who, who don't want to carry bigger. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> this one is a perfect choice. With contemporary line, you don't get weather sealing. That's one of the compromises with the with the contemporary line. Okay. They are always weather sealed towards your camera body with a rubber gasket, right. but they are not weather sealed construction. Okay. Why do we do that? We do that to get down in size and weight, but also cost, okay. so that you can enjoy good Sigma quality glass for a little bit lower price than your 20 millimeter 1.4 lens. So high performing lenses, always great image quality, but with some compromises on that. Right. So, <coughs> so for a beginner, what kind of lenses do you recommend for a beginner? So for beginners, I think the contemporary line is a great start because optically they're as good as any art lens. So okay. contemporary line, we don't compromise with image quality. Mm -hmm. We make them affordable by doing other things with them. On the contemporary line, we also have a, a APC lineup. If you have maybe a Fujifilm camera, okay. or you have the APC Sony E mount okay. cameras. Right. So these lenses are a bit cheaper, a bit entry lineup, which is, uh, of course, a little bit nicer if you're a beginner to get started with something. Okay. Uh, we have everything from zooms to wide aperture primes. So the assortment here is also quite uh, uh, substantial. What is the widest aperture we have in Sigma lenses? Is it 1.2 or is 1 it less than... 1.2 is the widest. Unfortunately, I don't have the 1.2 here. Okay. I was limited to one table here, so I had ah, to okay. kind of like bring ah, yeah. 50 out of my 150 lenses. That's a, that's so, a lot. Uh, yeah. So this is what we brought, but there's 35 1.2. That's our only 1.2 lens. 1.2. It's point. available for Sony E-mount and for L-mount. Mm -hmm. So that's the two. I really appreciate your time for you. giving a tour. That's amazing. Yep, great. Hello sir, how are you doing? I'm fine, thank you, and thank you for joining me. My name is Björn Nogren, I'm responsible in the Nordic area for ASO and uh, graphic monitors. So here today we have a couple of monitors with us and, and as you might know, it's, uh, it's very important uh, what you choose uh, kind of monitor when you, when you do pictures and movies. I guess that this movie is going up on YouTube, so yes, in is. YouTube it's very important that uh, yeah, when you work with the uh, movies, you have to look the, at them in a, in a profile that is BT709. And in, if you work with the video files in BT709 and save them, the material will look uh, excellent later on when you display them on, on YouTube. So that's one advice. If you work with pictures, uh, you can go down and 
use the Adobe RGB because that's the biggest color gamut in, in, in uh, for pictures. So this is what this is about. So uh, to be able to make the best possible pictures and the best possible movies, you need to have a good camera, but you also you need to understand or see on the monitor that you can count on the monitor that the monitor is right. So that's what I'm doing. So the best monitors on the market. Okay, and, and what do you recommend for a beginner to start with? Uh, for the beginner, we, we have the CS series. Uh, it's, um, it's from about 6,000 crowns and upwards about 600 euros. Uh, and uh, then you should uh, also um, buy one of these calibrators because this is like I told you before like tuning the guitar mm. so this is to tune the, the monitor to show the right uh, colors so and then we have 24 inch or 27 inch mm -hmm. and then we have our pro series and these are oh, they are a tad more expensive like 25,000 crowns mm -hmm. but actually from, from 6,000 crowns you get a lot of value uh, for, for your spent money so Really so, ASO, remember that. This is an amazing stuff. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you for having me. Hi, how are you doing? I'm fine, how are you? I'm good, thank you. So, uh, nice meeting you. Nice and to meet you. Would you like to talk about this magazine and uh, probably about uh, uh, how often this magazine comes in per year and uh, how can uh, beginning photographers can get inspired with this uh, magazine? Yes, uh, this is uh, Camera Bill. It's been around since, uh, since uh, 2005. Wow. 18 <laughs> since, years. Yes, uh, so it's been a while. It was actually around before but with another name, so we changed the name. And uh, now we're here with the, with the magazine. It comes out six times a year okay. now. Okay. It used to be 20 times, but uh, it, it's gone a little bit more digital now. So, okay. so you can follow us uh, through the internet. Great. Great. And we're, we're also doing this event for everyone here. So that's why we're here. So. That's amazing. And, yeah. And if you're a, a photographer, uh, you can get a lot of uh, different tips from, from, uh, from this magazine and from the site. You can learn more about uh, almost everything, uh, every part in uh, photography. So that's what we do. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, how are you doing? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm good. So, would you like to give us a tour about uh, your stall and uh, what are the special equipment we have and uh, and uh, what do you recommend for a beginner? And also maybe you can talk about uh, what is the latest trend. Most of them are going ahead from the DSLR to mirrorless. Absolutely. Maybe if you can talk about that, it would be great. Absolutely. So, today I've only brought mirrorless products because we can see it quite rapid change into the mirrorless markets. Uh, people want to, to join the mirrorless market instead of uh, going DSR. Uh, and I focus on professional uh, equipment mostly today as well, because it's mostly professional photographers, or at least very interested photographers. So that's my focus. But I brought the Z9, for example, which is our flagship camera. Flagship mirrorless camera, it's not the smallest one, but it's definitely the fastest and best one we have. It's a 45 megapixel, 20 frames per second camera, so it's a beast. That's definitely a beast. And we also have the 85 1.2, this is our latest uh, well, professional prime lens. Uh, and yeah, it's also fantastic lens of course. Uh, if we're looking at a bit more compact and a bit more affordable cameras, uh, Z30 would be my well, my go-to. Okay. It's, it's especially uh, aiming towards uh, 
bloggers, for example, <laughs> because it's well, we've, we've given a lot of thought to it, and we might be able to, to use it for stills, but also for photos. Okay. So this is a perfect vlogging camera. Vlogging camera next time. Okay. Oh, also brought almost all the equipment, and we're uh, all lenses, and we have macro lenses, uh, and we of course also have. The 2.8 Trinity, we have some teleconverters. Well, they have the most most things that they want to see. Okay. Would you like to introduce to your big boys? Yes, and of course, also a 600 F4 with a built in teleconverter. And this is the top of the line. The big lens, of course. It's brought an 800 and a 400 with built in teleconverter. <laughs> so, what is the trend that's going from uh, DSLR to mirrorless? What is happening? Uh, so, well, recently, quite recently, Nikon moved into to the mirrorless segment. Well, it was four years ago now, <laughs> so time flies. Right. Uh, and we've definitely seen that. There, these large are moving out. Well, people aren't really interested in them in the same way as before. Uh, and yeah, so I only brought mirrorless because that's where I want to put people. Uh, and there's also quite many well, advantages with mirrorless as well. You can use them as still cameras, but you can also use them as film cameras at the same time and you don't lose anything. Right. Uh, you have all the focus and benefits of the still camera lens in a mirrorless camera. You can also use so your prime lenses as a film lens, which of course you may see. And uh, that is something you couldn't do with the DSLR in the same way. You couldn't use autofocus with the DSLR in right. a sensible way. It's very correct. So, that's... Alright, so thank you for the two. I appreciate it. Enjoy. Sure. Thank you. Hi, how are you doing? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Thank you. So what's happening with a lot of cameras and lenses? Can you give us a little tour? Yeah, of course. Uh, this is not uh, all of the lineup, but this is a big part of it. Mm -hmm. uh, today we have over 65 lenses. And oh, all wow. the lenses fit all the cameras. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, quite special for our system because you can start off with a quite simple camera. It's an APS-C uh, camera. That's a crop sensor. Crop sensor. Crop sensor. Okay. And uh, it has the same uh, e uh, the same mount as, for example, uh, a, a bigger cinema line camera. Okay. Uh, but you can start off very simple with a, with a crop sensor uh, camera, maybe uh, a 6400, a 6600, or if you uh, are new beginner and want to, to shoot video okay. we have the ZV E10 that is a new vlog type style of camera okay. with a built-in microphone mm -hmm. and a built-in dead cat to, to reduce the wind noise, noise. Okay. Um, and all of these cameras is the same mount as our new A7R Mark V. Okay. So this means like the other brands, we don't have to go like uh, APS-C to, so yeah. this lenses can be interchangeable. Exactly. In, in, the, in the other lines, you have one mount for, for the simpler cameras, one mount for, for, the, for yeah. the more high end. Okay. So you can start off building, building a, a good portfolio with lenses and so on, and then build it up to, to a more uh, professional system. What is your latest camera and your latest lens? Do you want to? Uh, yeah, uh, the latest camera that we released uh, in uh, in this uh, autumn mm -hmm. is uh, A7R Mark V. A7R Mark V. Yes, okay, great. That, that's uh, a new new camera in our res resolution series. Okay. So it's a, a camera with high megapixels. Uh, 
super good for nature and for um, uh, what you call it, uh, landscape photographer mm -hmm. and so on. Mm -hmm. It's a completely new way of uh, the screen. You have a bigger screen than, than before, and also a four axle. The tiltable. Yeah, tiltable four axles. Okay. Uh, so you can uh, flip it around like all, <laughs> however you want. Um, it also has a new ship in it, an AI ship. Okay. That uh, can recognize subjects as trains, planes, insects, birds, people. So it's a new way of, uh, of, of thinking with the camera. So it's, it's a very top of the line, high end product. And how much weight are we talking about for a. Uh, how much what? Weight. Weight? Uh, it, it's a, approximately one kilo for, uh -huh. for the uh, camera house. Okay. So it's quite. Uh, Decent, decent weight. Decent weight, okay. and uh, all of all of uh, our full frame cameras weigh mm. roughly the same. Okay. Uh, and a new thing with Sony is that we upgrade our old lenses. Mm -hmm. So if you look at this one, it's a 70-200 G Master uh, okay. lens. Yes. It's a Taylor lens, uh, but now we have a new new one as well. It's a completely the same. Uh, 7200 okay. but this new one is 400 grams lighter than the oh, old wow. one wow. and it has a lot of better uh, glass in it so mm -hmm. it's more high-end more um, sharp but much much li lighter lightweight yes for the travel photographer this would be very convenient exactly mm -hmm. um, we have also a new lens it's a 50 millimeter, mm -hmm. 1.4. 1.4, okay. Um, we have a similar one, it's a 1.2. 1 1.2. 1 uh, but this one is a new one, it's a lighter, more compact version. Mm -hmm. And it's a G Monster lens as well, so it's the high end, the most high end in our lineup. And what is the widest lens you have? A wider angle? The, the most wide angle? The most wide uh, angle lens you have. It depends how you think of it. We have for the, a, the, the most uh, for, a la, for a landscape for photography. Landscape. Yep. We have uh, a 12 to 24 that's super popular. Let me find it. We have one with a uh, uh, f4. F4. But we also have this one. 12 to 24. 12 with to f4. 12 to 24. Okay. Uh, it's a 2.8 also. Oh, so okay. uh, this is a very good landscape. Uh, lens. Mm -hmm. We also have some some uh, 10 millimeters and so on, but 14 millimeter. Okay. But uh, I would recommend this much more because of the super good quality on the glass. It's great. great. And is it a fisheye lens? Uh, no, it, it looks like a fisheye. Okay. But uh, it's. Uh, you don't want distortion in, in the edges okay. of the of the lens, so it may be look like it will be very uh, like fisheye. Mm -hmm. But when you shoot a, a, a landscape or so on, it you won't get these uh, kind of edges okay. that you do on a fish fisheye lens. So this is 24 and 12. Wow. Can, can you maybe just show it on the other side? So this way. Okay. okay. Well, that's definitely a difference. Yeah. It shows the great difference. Yeah. So, uh, thank you for uh, thank you, the thank two, you. and I really appreciate it. No problem. Have a nice night.
Vad tänker du om att vi blir något mer tidigt på plats här eller vad? Hi, how are you doing? I'm good, how are you? Good, thank you. Good. So, is some photography? Yes, this is the Swedish Championship in Photography. Uh -huh. Some of these images that you were looking at are prints from the print competition. Okay. So these are all finalist images that have been uh, in different categories in the print competition. Uh -huh, that's throughout great. Throughout the years. Yeah, that's great. That's great. So. Uh, so somebody want to do you like a, do you do like a photography school or what do you do do you like a, take events or what do you um, well not really a school it's a competition okay so what you can do if you're a Swedish man a Swedish citizen mm -hmm. you can send in your photography in different categories okay these are mostly portrait categories and okay we have some nature categories as well uh -huh. Uh -huh. and we have a digital um, entrance okay. which is in June this mm -hmm. year from the 1st of June to the, the 30th of June okay and uh, then from that digital mm -hmm. competition mm -hmm. you have a few in each category like the top 10 in every category mm -hmm. goes through to the print uh, final competition and we have judges from all over the world judging the, both the prints and the digital images that's great. That's great. So, if uh, what, what about the uh, you said about Swedish uh, persons, Swedish citizens, yeah, in right? In this competition, in the Swedish championship, you have to be a Swedish citizen. Okay. Um, to take part of it, because uh, if you do um, perform well and win with one of your images, mm -hmm. you can be a part of the Swedish um, Swedish national team. Uh -huh, okay. And yeah. Sweden I understand. In the world I understand. I understand. I understand. Yeah. That makes sense. So that's like one of the rules. Okay. Otherwise, you can be an amateur photographer and okay. you can be a professional photographer. Right. Everybody is competing on the same level. That's great. Yeah. That's great. And thank you for the tour. I appreciate it. Thank you. Hope you enjoy. Yeah. Hi, how are you doing? Um, I'm good, thank you. And you? I'm good, thank you. Uh, could you give a little tour of uh, all the products from Vortex? Of course. Uh, I'm here from Nordic and we represent uh, Vortex in Sweden. We have uh, some other brands here as well as Everstock, Carebags and uh, Bags for Binoculars. Uh, 
and uh, we have a range of vortex, both glass range finders and binoculars. So here's a very neat product. It's a vortex Diamondback 8 by 32. It's a compact format and a really good uh, optics for this size of, of a binocular. Ah, great. Uh, saves about uh, three and a half thousand Swedish. Nice. Uh, that, that one has an eight time magnification. Eight time magnification. Mm. Yes, oh, it's, uh, so you are eight times closer to, the, tar to the target with that one. If you need more power, you will have a 10 by 42 and you are 10 times closer to the target. Okay. And uh, if you want to be even closer, you can go to a spotting scope. And this particular one is the nicest that we have, and it's from 27 in magnification up to 60. 27 up to 60? Up to 60. Wow. Close to the top. Uh -huh. It also has uh, ultra HD lenses, uh -huh. ultra high definition. It's uh, a razor from Vortex. Okay, that's great. And this is uh, the same magnification, but it's a Diamondback. So mm -hmm. it's a little but little less quality, mm -hmm. but still really, really nice for the kind of money it costs. Mm -hmm. And those ones in this size you need to use on a tripod. Tripod, definitely. Yes. Yes. Definitely. Okay. So thank you. Okay. Thank Much you. appreciated. Thank you.